Capture One 20. 23 is out now. What's good about it? Let's get into it right now. Number one, you will notice that when you import your images into Capture One, they look significantly better than had you imported them into any other program. This is because the Capture One profiles for your cameras are built by human beings. They verify them, they make sure they're as good as they could possibly be before pushing them out to the world. What this means is that you are already at an advantage. And that's not even an update from 2023. What's new in 2023? There's kind of three things that have piqued my interest the most. The first one is, we're gonna call it assisted culling. And what that means is that rather than it going through and selecting everything for you and being completely automated, which I feel like a lot of people kind of push back against, or having absolutely no assistance at all and just doing it the old way. Capture One will now put your similar images into groups. So you're able to quickly go through them and select the best image from that grouping. There's a slider to set the similarity parameter and that's it, it's pretty easy. Next up, assisted editing. They're calling them smart adjustments. Basically rather than just saving a typical style, you're now saving that style with a global exposure and white balance. We'll call it a suggestion. It's not, it's not gonna set every single image to exactly the same white balance. It's going to take into account all the data in that image and it's going to try to match them across the board. This isn't like copy and pasting and just putting the same style on a number of different images. This smart adjustment will work on a number of different raw files from different points within the day and it will make them very nice and cohesively fit together. Next up, you can layer your styles. So say for instance, you wanna mix your colors with a specific film grain you can layer those and you can add and subtract more things to kind of build something that specifically meets your needs for that photo. And you can save that as a smart adjustment if you want. So you're able to apply that to a number of different images for a wedding, for portrait photographers. Obviously this is massively beneficial. Let's go to the actual computer, talk a little bit more about it. All right, here we are inside. Here we are inside of the computer and inside of Capture One 2023. This is the beta, but if you're watching this, there is now the actual production version available. So I'm going to go through some things that I mentioned. Number one, just how nice all the images look on import. Even though I shot these files on Sony, which I know a few people are like, the color science is bad. People that are making the, the Capture One profiles, I would say it looks pretty, pretty darn good. So when you import your images, we'll start with the culling aspect of it. And here we are. So in culling, you can see that these images, that these ones, I just selected one, one of each of these. But if you have a bunch of images that are the same, this little tab over here on the left pops up. So this is main image, and then all of your sub images. So you find the one that's the best, or you can grab a few of them if you want and just star them by numbers or star them by colors, however you sort things. Then you hit the right arrow to go to the next image. Again, it finds another set. You can adjust the grouping uh, and then you can just slide the similarity. I find it, I think it came default at 75% and uh, I'm pretty happy with it where it is. So now you're done your culling, you click done, you head over here. Look at how great this file looks with the import profile. I barely even want to do anything to it, but I am going to come over here to style and we're going to come down here. We're going to actually add, we're going to add spring two to this image. So this is what it looks like right now with spring two enabled. And I'm going to save this as a custom style. So you can add other things, um, I guess to, to jump ahead a little bit here. Let's talk about it right now. If you're interested, you can add additional things like film grain. So if you're, you're interested in some smooth grain, some intense grain. So you add that, you can see the layers up here. You can do that. I might not recommend that but it's a thing that you can do. So if you have multiple different things, if you want to build your curves and colors so you can mix and match, you're able to do that, which I think is really, really cool. So we're going to build this into a custom style. I'm going to enable smart adjustments. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to understand what the general white balance is, not necessarily just the Kelvin. It's not going to edit just the Kelvin. It's going to understand the white balance of the scene as well as the exposure of the scene. You can also select anything that you want down here. I'm going to leave those all default. I did do grain, so I'm happy that that comes default checked. And I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna call this one Spring Smart. I have my style here. Spring Smart is exactly what we just added here. Don't wanna add the same preset again. So we're gonna clear that. We're gonna go to another image. So let's say this image here, it's clearly in a very different scene. However, if I am to click Spring Smart, it's going to match the exposure and the white balance, the overall feeling of the image with this one here. 
So as you can see, the tones are a little bit different. The lighting is definitely different. We got this beautiful, diffuse, perfect lighting situation here on them. And over here, the lighting is not exactly the same, but it still matches pretty nicely. Maybe a better example is this from here to here. And then let's go to a completely different time of day. And the warm tones, the nice white balance there matches nicely. So if you want a more cohesive starting point, creating your styles as smart styles, is something that is definitely going to save you a lot of time, especially if you just enable it over the entire gallery and start from there. It is definitely going to speed up your editing significantly. So you have your smart adjustments for editing and you have your groups for culling. And those two things combined are going to save you a lot of time. And beyond that, the colors they are looking great. So style like that, that's on import. And this is after the smart adjustment has been made. Smart adjustment. Smart adjustment, smart adjustment. There's very little that I would do to this image. So as you can see, we haven't actually even gone into the adjustments tab. That was all just working with the styles and the smart adjustments. Now moving into the adjust layer. Well, there's nothing that I'm really gonna do. <laughs> Maybe that. So if you are looking for something that matches exposures and white balances, man, this photo looks way better than when I imported it into another software. If you are looking for something that is just going to match your exposures nicely, cohesively across a set of images that aren't necessarily all at the same time of day or in the same lighting conditions, these smart adjustments are going to do a lot of really, really nice things for you. And they're going to speed your workflow up dramatically. If you were, say, to go in, out and do a family session and you took a lot of family session photos, you can just apply your smart adjustment to everything and you can call from the mostly final versions of your images, which I think is a very, very nice place to be. And it doesn't really cost you anything that you're not paying somebody to edit these files, that this is all just done within the system and you're able to call from final versions. If you so choose, you don't have to, you don't have to listen to me. And there you go, let's exit the computer and go back to the other desk. Here we go. There you have it, capture one. 2023. There's a link down below if you're interested in going to check it out yourself. There is a lot good in Capture One. Um, the ongoing joke, or at least in my mind, is that the, there's not a whole lot of coverage on YouTube about Capture One because the people that are using it are too busy working at their professional photography job. They're doing a headshot business, a wedding photography business. They're just too busy to create content here for YouTube, except for Vanessa Joy, and Gary Hughes, and a number of other people that have immediately proven my joke wrong. Drop any questions you have in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.